feel like lockdown has now gone on longer than they were expecting it to go on. Yes. I think yes. I, I crossed, there was, I, I never had an idea at the start of like how long I thought it was going to last. But I now realize that it's longer than that. Like there, just, yeah. there was literally one week where I was like, nah, it's too long. I'm insane now. Um, <laughs> Sorry, some, someone said yes. I didn't recognize their voice. Who was that? Who, who was, was that? Who was that? Is that, is that, that voice? There's another voice. Wait, another voice. What? Another guest. <gasps> another guest. <gasps> we're going to come podcast. We're going to turn a chair around here. It's Naomi from Power Word Roll. Hello, oh, Naomi. Hey. 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 Hello. Hey. Welcome to the show. And indeed, welcome to you and welcome to everyone else. Hello, everyone. And welcome to the Danger Club podcast. Yeah. Hey. Hey. yeah. We are back still in lockdown, still recording remotely. And here with Naomi from Power Word Roll to tell a brand new story. Naomi, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm feeling another episode of Power Word Danger. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. <laughs> It is, it's about time, because yeah. we've been on your show so many times. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of you, like, trying to get through all of you. It's just... All right. yeah. We are basically like, like, like Pokemon. It's, it's, Pokemon. Yeah, we're it's one trying of the, to catch them all. It's one of the real traits about the Danger Club podcast, is that if you give us any opening at all, we will show up on your show. Like, there <laughs> it's, been, there was... it's been a real pleasure, actually, uh, having you all on. Um, you've caused us to have our first character death, so that's, that's great. <laughs> Where, uh, who so was yeah, that? I... someone played a butter-based rogue, which was really helpful when shit hit the fan. It was just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, um, for those people that don't know, what is what's Power Word Roll? Tell us about it. Uh, uh, so Power Word Roll is we do the D and D, uh, but we cut out all the garbage. So if it's boring, it gets cut. So we leave you with thirty minutes of fast-paced fun D and D. Hang on, so what? So hand if... up. If the garbage all gets cut, then how did we end up on it? Am I right, <laughs> guys? Am I right? Ah, hello! Well, good the morning. Again, again, again we, yeah. we, we, we sneaked on there, uh, like we do every, every time. So. We just we keep the jokes. So uh, there's some that I have had to cut, that just obviously just so flat. But, um, you know, we do what we can with what we have. Sometimes I just have to put the laugh track in afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> like Scott, a bad 90s sitcom. And, uh, and then that's it. That was Scott on the powder roll. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> it makes for puns. really intimidating record. When we did our Dragon Meat show with you guys, which is the only one we've recorded in the same room where we've all been together, there oh. were just moments where one of us would make a joke and nothing would be said, but there was just a look on your face that was just that you were just like, well, that's not going in. <laughs> 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 on, our, on our full recordings, you can definitely hear us sometimes say, well, that's getting cut. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you I'm just really keep fair. those in. That's that's like conversations. That's half our yeah, podcast yeah. just going. Yeah. I'm not. I'm if, cutting that. That's if good. only we had someone on our podcast that did that. I mean, who would who would that be? Who please our podcast? <laughs> Colin. That's Can we pay good. someone for that? Can we pay <laughs> someone for that? Hey, it listen, was... man. I keep all the bad stuff in, even mine. You know, you I do. You do. I look. Episode, episode it's... coming out on Monday. Oh well, sorry. This will this will go in the future, won't it? Um, there's an episode we episode. released a couple of weeks ago, and uh, yeah, I completely mispronounce a word and just leave it in. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I could I could have <laughs> recorded myself saying the word right and made myself look great. Nope. Oh, that's what I do. I just cut out, <laughs> cut out any of the bad bits of me, and I'm like, I sound so good on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just give yourself a bit of ADR and make everyone else look shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, your podcast is a little bit like the uh, the sort of uh, Instagram filter of podcasts, and that's essentially what you're saying. Power word roll. Is that, yeah. uh, is that what you're going for? Yeah. So obviously Conrad is a very beautiful young man. So he kind of carries it for the rest of us. We just put his face on everything. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's how we do it, really. His face affects the podcast quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big up, Conrad. Big up, um, Conrad. It's nice that's to- the nicest we've ever been to him. <laughs> He's not even here to hear it. Like, yeah, the stuff, not on here. The stuff you cut is you guys being mean to Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't cut that. We always leave us being mean to Conrad in. <laughs> oh, I have promised him I will teach him Starfinder at some point. So I, we will we will definitely do that um, sometime. <laughs> um, but it, it is good to... Because that is kind of our, our entire marketing strategy with this podcast is us showing up to other people's stuff. Like that's kind of... We did a, there was a big thread on our Discord a while ago about how did you discover the Danger Club podcast? How did you become a Dangerling? And people talking about it. And like half the answers were, Dan and Ross turned up at my gaming table and just 
and just played <laughs> games with us and then just left flyers with us when they went. And so I guess we listened. I was like, and, yeah. and being Ross, I bet he didn't say goodbye. He just literally <laughs> just left in a cloud of flyers and flyers and yeah. he was gone. Just threw some flyers at them and then went. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> little smoke pellet, little yeah. <laughs> little flamenco guitar riff, a handful of flyers in the air, and we're gone. That's how yeah. it goes. But we're back to tell. We're telling a brand new story this week. So we had our uh, we had our two parter the last couple of weeks with Jess Foster Q. That was fun. Um, yeah. and insane. It was <laughs> what? Jess is very funny. Um, and and took to it having never played a role, not just Pathfinder, having never played a role playing game. Like she, she, she didn't know she needed dice when we started it, uh, and picked it up amazingly, and we we had a lot of fun. Um, but that was just a little two-parter uh, to fit around childcare and the I think the TV show she was shooting later on that evening. <laughs> or yeah, you know. yeah. Well, um, yeah. She's she's doing she's doing a lot of a lot of excellent writing for for some quite big stuff. So yeah, keep an eye out. She's gonna be she's gonna be about. Yeah, if you're definitely. if you're in the UK, um, she was on QI, I think, last week or the week before. It's tonight. So be able, well, it's tonight from when we're recording. Oh, but yeah. yeah, from from when this goes out, a couple of weeks ago. I can't we're really not, we're really not thinking three dimensionally today, are we? Like? <laughs> Both sometime, well sometime it's on at somewhere. It's MCM <laughs> comic. Ah, oh, no, it's never. MCM comic on. That's the only thing. We need changed. to replay that scene from like Back to the Future, where he explains how <laughs> yeah. time works, so we can go right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> But it'll be on iPlayer. If you want to go check out, you want to see Jess being funny, that'll be it. That's on iPlayer. Oh, I thought you meant the Danger Club podcast. Was Danger like, Club podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to sneak it in there. That's the. Uh, Ross and I are going to sneak weeks. into uh, the BBC. Just, just uh, throw some flies or steam fly. fry. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. We'll just, we'll just appear and just throw flies <laughs> and just disappear again on live television. <laughs> the BBC. <laughs> Stick a flyer into right. one of the tape decks. Be like, there we go. That works. Is that the new Witcher song? Stick a flyer in your <laughs> Danger Club Podcast. Oh, Danger Club Podcast. Now leave. Oh. <laughs> did you say tape deck, Dan? I did. They, they have tape decks, right? That's how, <laughs> that's how things are stored. What has happened to time this morning? Like, we've gone back to 1986. Yeah, Amazing. This is, my, this is my favorite part of the preamble where James and Dan try to out old each other. <laughs> Uh, I can actually feel myself being like reabsorbed into the womb as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's working. Yes, <laughs> it, is, it is essentially it is essentially our, our podcast is a group of people acting like dads, except the one person who is a dad who is playing a mum. Let's tell the story <laughs> of Shania Rain. Hooray! Whoa. You're just going to drop that into conversation. We're wow. about to start the show, Colin. I think it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still that. surprised. I'm right. still like, this is too much for me. <laughs> well, it's going to edit that out. Yeah. Let's keep it, let's keep it <laughs> mysterious as we go back in time and we drop down through the earth into the dark lands far below Galarian. Now, could at this point be anyone's backstory uh, as we drop down through the upper levels where the troglodytes live, uh, the Zolgaths, uh, and the dinosaurs, dinosaurs live underground in Galarian. We drop through that to the second level of the Darklands, to the great mushroom cities, uh, to the great spires, uh, the home of the drow. Could be anyone. Who is it? Is it Ed Johnson? Um, I, that's what my money on is. The money's on for this uh, this backstory. <laughs> depends how long ago it was. Like. It depends how long ago. It could be a long, long time. It feels like a long, long time ago in a galaxy. Ed, Ed Johnson isn't as old as the Earth, Colin. You can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> you That's know what Colin? I was saying. Like, <laughs> he's not the he's not as old as, but he goes as deep as. So you know, <laughs> oh. he's timeless. He's timeless. Yeah. Um, and as we uh, as we go, we're going back a, a long, long way. So Shania, you are you are thinking back hundreds of years. Uh, and you're thinking back as far as you can in your memory. And there you can see a baby Fardine, the Panotti. Um, it's his story that we're telling today. It's a <laughs> tiny little elephant mat. No. Um, what am I doing? This is a really serious bit. Right. You go back as far as you can remember. Young Shania Rain. Uh, you're a small girl. You're sat on a bed with your mother. You're clutching your favorite toy close to your chest uh, as she speaks. What's Shania's favorite toy? What's her toy as a, as a little girl? Uh, it's a little wooden monkey. 
a little wooden monkey. Yes, it has, it has sort of opposable arms, um, uh, you know, so it can reach up for you like this. Oh. Whoa. No one can see that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I reached up. I reached up with both my arms, a little clingy thing. Yeah, a little clingy monkey. Opposable wooden, monkey, that's a... Opposable monkey, <laughs> some other rock name. Their so second album was great. I loved it. <laughs> That's a prestige toy. Like your mother queued up outside Toys R Us for that. Uh, well, I mean, you no, know, I think she whittled it herself. Nice. I mean, it's right. toy, yeah. Toys were yours. Um, <laughs> so you're holding the holding a toy close to you, close to you, and your mother is holding up a symbol. She's holding up a spiral. It's carved from a piece of the dried woody fungus that uh, your people use in crafts. And as she holds up to you, she says, "You'll see this, Shania." This is a forbidden symbol among our people, but I want you to see it. It is the marker of the Lady of Graves. And people think that Forasma is the goddess of death, and she is, but that is only one end of the spiral. She is also the goddess of birth, of prophecy. She is complex in a way that uh, our people do not understand. Here. Yeah. Look at this symbol, Shania. She hands you the little spiral and gives it to you uh, to look at. And uh, feel the, your fingers. The birth and the death, they are, they are one thing? Hmm. You see at one end of the spiral, this is death. And at the other end of the spiral, this is birth. But everything in between, the spiral itself, that is the unknowable prophecy of life. You are all of these things, Shania. Never forget that. On the one hand, you are who you are born to be. Some people will never see past that. And also, there are others who will uh, remember you in a way that you are when you are gone. And you are that person as well. You are their memories. But you are also the part in the middle, my child. The choices that you make, the lives that you touch. This is a part of you as well. I think you are older now. It is, I think it is time for me to tell you why we have left Umberware behind. Why we are traveling closer to the surface. Yeah, I've been finding, I've, I've felt some things that I have not felt for uh, uh, since uh, many years that I have been born. Why do we go this way, mother? Your mother is about to speak when suddenly there is a uh, there's a crash from downstairs from somewhere in the house. Uh, you hear the sound of shouts and then so the sounds of metal clanging against metal. Your mother looks up um, and looks alarmed. Uh, she hears the noise. Uh, she turns back to you quickly. Under the bed, Shania. Now. But, 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 no. What is happening? Do not no. argue with me, child. Under the bed, now. You stay there. You do not make a sound, no matter what happens. Do as I say. Yes, mother. I, but for, don't leave me. Mother, please do not leave me on my own. I do not understand. Hustles you under the bed quickly. She turns uh, and moves across the room. You see her feet as she runs across to the door, opens it uh, and peers out. Uh, as soon as the door opens, you hear the sound of battle raging somewhere down below. It fills your ears. The sound of voices shouting in a language you don't understand. She bends down and throws one final glance back to you. And then she wreathes her hand in emerald magic uh, and runs out of the room, slamming the door behind her. The ferocious noise rises to a crescendo and you hear a great explosion from downstairs. More clanging, more screaming, until suddenly the noise starts to go quiet, bit by bit, until finally the room is completely silent. You wait for a couple of moments and then you hear the thump, thump, thump of heavy footsteps coming up the corridor outside the room. You push yourself back as far as you can under the bed as you sense something on the other side of the door. The door creaks and very slowly opens. And under the bed, from your place under the bed, you can see a pair of stocky booted feet entering the room. And you can tell by the way it breathes that it's a dwarf. There's something about it breathing heavily as it strides in. It makes its way across 
the room towards the bed where you're hiding. And it gets so close that you're convinced that it must have seen you. And suddenly it turns and sits down on the mattress. The whole thing sags uh, close to you as the creature sits down on the bed on top of you. And you can smell the sweat uh, and the blood. There's a clang as a huge axe drops to the floor and lands on the stone just inches from your nose. And you look out of it and you can see a dragon motif carved onto the blade of it. That's not what your eye is drawn to. Your eye is drawn to the blood all across, smeared across the blade. You try as hard as you can not to breathe. Another dwarf enters the room. Now the dwarf on the bed stirs and it says something in a language that you don't understand. A sort of guttural language. All of a sudden it stops and seems to notice something across the room. You look out from under the bed and you see your toy monkey lying where you dropped it when you were hustled under the bed in the middle of the floor. The creature immediately stands uh, and starts to uh, walk across the room towards the toy, that terrible axe grinding against the stone as it walks. The dwarf bends down and you see its thick hand pick up the toy and lift it up out of sight. Suddenly, it says something to the other in an angry voice. It starts shouting and yelling. You hear a crash as the toy hits the wall. The dwarves start shouting at each other so heatedly that you think they're going to come to blows. You don't know what they're shouting about, but they're yelling. One of, the one that was sitting on the bed is furious. And all of a sudden, they sweep out of the room and they're gone. You're there in silence. You don't know how long you lay there. You don't know how many hours or how many days you stay hidden under the bed, not daring to move. All you remember is how it ended. You remember the noises downstairs, the door opening again. You remember the bed being lifted from you, looking up into the face of Vash Azreni, the drow that you would come to call brother. You remember his voice well, well. Looks like the dwarves missed one of you. Don't worry, little sister. You're home now. And we cut forward in time. Many years later. Where we have Shania Rain. Similar to how we remember her in the Danger Club podcast. Uh, so she is older now. She is an adult. Um, she is in. Uh, she was in a scullery, somewhere in a uh, somewhere in a, uh, a large a building, in a large um, drow noble house. There are pots and pans piled up everywhere around you, Shania. Um, filthy floors, a mop and bucket, um, although not as threatening a mop and bucket as the ones in the previous podcast. Um, you've checked it out; it's not dangerous. Um, and you are um, the uh, the matron of the house. Not in the sense of uh, D&D trial matron, but there's, uh, the one in charge of the, uh, the kitchens, the, chef, the cook, um, is just leaning in from the door uh, and, uh, and yelling at you uh, as you've finished cleaning some of the dishes. Now, one thing that we do notice about Shania on this is she is heavily pregnant. Uh, you are... Um, how far along would you say you are... Um, Shania, of course. Um, I mean, it's going to be, yeah, sort of, uh, in, in terms of, you know, what a, a human pregnancy would be, um, you know, we're going to, we must be about um, seven or eight months ish along. Um, you know, basically, um, from, from this point onwards, you know, um, the, the, the baby could arrive any time. If it, you know, arrives. Uh, very quickly, it might be a bit early. You know, it might need some might need some help. Um, if it arrived uh, later, it might be a real problem um, getting it out. But it could arrive at any time. It's it's you know it's grown enough to be brought into the world and survive at this point. So the uh, uh, despite this, you're still working hard, still trying to clean dishes. Um, the cook shouts across at you from the door and says, "Janaya." These plates are a disgrace. Clean them again. If you want to go outside, 
You need you do you finish your work. You earn your place here in the house. Yes, Matron. Of course, I, I, I will. Uh, I, I will work hard. I'm sorry. Uh, says, they should never have brought you back here. And she turns and slams the door. Um, as you are uh, cleaning, a, uh, a small badger pokes its head out from uh, under one of the uh, counters where it's been hiding. Oh, Philippe, what am I doing here? This is this is not the life that I saw for myself. <laughs> you, you, you are my only friend. <laughs> yeah, Badger <clears throat> looks at you sadly um, and nods. Um, uh, oh, so maybe, maybe you are right. <laughs> uh, maybe, well, maybe, maybe there's maybe there's something wrong with me. Hmm? I just, I just, I don't fit in here. <laughs> But then, how could I possibly fit in up there? <clears throat> I just, I feel like, like, like there is, is, is more to life than, than backstabbing and, and darkness. I, <sighs> look at this place, isn't it dank? There's something rotting, it's totally rank. And I'm just a girl, a girl who has nothing. Look at these shoes, so full of holes. And all my friends, they are badgers and moles. Look at this girl. She has got nothing. My family is dead and I'm skinny. Except for the child they put in me. You want a reason to live? Well, I've got one. But what if it's a boy? Well, what then? I want to be where the humans are, out in the weather where everything's bright. I want to be where the sun comes out and everything's based in that. What's the word? Light! <laughs> out of this cave, I'd be so brave. Cast off the shadows of the night. I'll go up there where things are fair into the light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes! Oh, how I fish, how I fish. Oh, I had known what Mother was talking about, where we were going. Oh, there's something inside of me, something. Maybe I will discover one day. You have but for now. I must, uh, I must finish these dishes. Hmm? Now, you get along, you little scamp. <laughs> you are interrupted growing. from your, um, from your thinking by the door opening again. Um, <clears throat> Naomi, you are uh, you have uh, come down to check on um, Shania, who is uh, within your care. Would you like to tell us who enters the room? Um, yeah, I think I, I'll I'll just enter if that's okay. Yeah, go um, for it. Because obviously, the rock is always greener <laughs> in someone else's cave. You dream about going up there, but it's a big mistake. Uh, and this is your uh, aunt slash uh, birthing coach, um, Karen, uh, walks into the room. Uh, oh, Car, I'm sorry, I was just dreaming again. You know how I am. Well, you are. Mm, I see you have a lot of dishes to do. Um, but as your birthing coach, I really yeah. think that we should be breathing, breathing so, while we do this. So, so are, you, are you saying that uh, with every dish I wash, I can breathe? One in, dish wash. One out, dish dry. Dish wash, dish dry. Dish wash, dish dry. Is this no, 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 slower, no, slower, slower. Oh, slower. Dish Mostly, wash. Uh, the dishes are still dirty. You can't wash oh, them that okay. fast. Oh, oh, okay. You so, really need to take a little bit more time. I have been told that my dishwashing technique leaves an awful lot to be desired. Maybe, perhaps, I was not made to wash dishes. I don't know. I think Karen uh, comes and she like puts her arms around you as best she can, and there's like this sort of like teaching you to play pool sort of moment, but with washing dishes. <laughs> like ghost. Hello. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Is it me you're washing for? Um, so, uh, so like a hand on my hand. Yeah. Um, and showing me how mm -hmm. to go round yes. and round a dish slowly. That's what gentle circles. So, you know, like this, this is the this is the circle of life we're experiencing here together. <laughs> I, I see. 
yeah, um, this, I, I, am, I am completely comfortable with this. This is fine for me. <laughs> uh, I have no problem with what you are doing there. That's okay. Yeah, I'm unthreatened by you. I feel like we're you. connecting. And that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. The, uh, mm-hmm. the badger, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> the badger from its place under the uh, the counter turns and looks at a couple of rats. They both shrug. <laughs> <laughs> um, at that point, the door opens again. Ross, you have been sent to bring um, every to bring Karen and Shania upstairs to the audience chamber for a, a meeting with the lady of the house. Please tell us who enters the room. Uh, Imrath Ergen, he's a drow uh, man who has uh, curtains, white hair curtains. Uh, He's also wearing spectacles uh, and he squints a lot. It's almost like he's short sighted. Uh, And um, he's he's not like muscly, he's quite lean. Um, He looks a bit shy and he comes in and goes, ah, hello there. Um, Hello, uh, Shania. <laughs> hello. Uh, oh, oh, uh, Imras. Um, uh, hello. Uh, uh, can I help you? Uh, yeah. Uh, you're looking very beautiful today. Um, please, <laughs> but, are you, uh, do you need to sit down? I can get you a chair or something if you need to. Well, I, I am in the middle of, of doing my breathing exercises and dishwashing. Um, oh, uh, I, I, the, I'm, I'm not sure that I should, uh, that, that would be, I would be uh, in trouble. Oh, no, no. Uh, so I've got to, you've got to go upstairs uh, into the, the meeting chamber. Uh, oh, requested both of you. Yeah. In her condition? You can't you, be serious. I, will, I, can, I can help you up. To, I can carry you if you like. Um, I think that that's only right. Okay. But, um, are you sure? I mean, I am, I am, I'm heavy with child. I'm, I can't, I, I'm, You're not I'm heavy quite... with child. Ross, You're if you fucking child. drop, if you fucking drop <laughs> pregnant Shania, like, I and the danger things are going to find out where you fucking live, I swear to fucking God. I can, I can sort of help your arm if you want, like, rather than carry you fully if you want. Uh, perhaps this would be best, yeah, okay. And then no, you know it's what? unacceptable. <laughs> um, well, perhaps you could take the other arm. And between you, then I will no, be. No, I need to be safe. with you spiritually, but not physically. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have, I have, a, I have a, a pinched nerve in my joint that means I cannot help. So. Um, I understand. Uh, okay. But I'll be with you the whole way. In there's, the there's two ways up these stairs based on the, this conversation. I can tell you, one of them <laughs> involves rolling a dice, and one of them doesn't. <laughs> Well, we got to the, the, there's an easier way to get up if you want. And you know what, Shania, um, I will, um, I can do the dishes for you, so you, you, you don't have to do them. You would do my dishes for me? Are you, this is, <laughs> uh, no, this is crazy. We would both be for the chop. No, it's okay. I, I am, I, 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 I won't tell if you don't. <laughs> it's all hard <laughs> okay. smiles. Uh, okay. Uh, so, but why am I needed upstairs? I don't know. They didn't tell me. They just said that they needed you to to come upstairs to meet in the chamber. Okay. Shania takes a deep breath. Um, She's clearly scared about what's going to happen up there um, and uh, goes to make her way up the stairs. Okay. The the badger follows you looking pensive uh, and the, the rest of you follow along as well. You make your way up the stairs, out of the scullery, out of the servants' quarters where Shania, where you live, uh, most of your life, uh, and you make your way into the grand audience chamber at the very heart of the house. Uh, there's a great table in the centre where the main family dine, and at the end there is a great chair um, where people sit. Uh, Do I yes. need to revise my accent? <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> am no, I going to is... be the only person with a non-like Germanic accent? <laughs> Germanic is a very to... generous way of describing this. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, no, it's it's sort of just vaguely, uh, yeah. Scott's not. It's fine. The, there will be others. Don't yeah. worry. And this is only like, <laughs> this is. I think we established like the the Umberweb um, accent. This part of this particular part of the dark yeah. But There are drow from different parts, so that is fine. Um, cool. It's um, not like gnomes right. who are universally French. <laughs> <laughs> So you make uh, you in the great uh, in the great um, audience chamber, and at the end, at the very top of the room, there is a, uh, a throne um, on which is sat your stepmother, Zilkwa Azreni, the um, 
Zilqua. 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 Z I L Q U A. Zilqua. Okay. Azraini. She has been the head of the Azraini family for centuries um, and has ruled over it. Um, standing beside her is her husband, Trianus Azraini. Um, Zilqua is a. Uh, uh, an impressive and imposing dark elf. She has a great mane of white hair, which is heavily braided around a bejeweled headpiece. She wears a purple gown um, and jeweled rings and necklace. as She sits and stares out at you. Uh, her husband, Trianus, is a much more slightly built drow um, with receding white hair and a little goatee. Uh, as soon as you enter the room, um, he looks away from you and he will not meet your gaze um, while you're in the room. Trey! I haven't seen you all day. How are you doing? <clears throat> he shuffles. K- Carlin. Brother, good. it has been too long. Mm. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, it is always good to see that you are, you are looking well, I suppose. Um, uh, well, I've been trying this new tea. It just completely flushes you out. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, at that point, <laughs> as you all think about being flushed out by tea, you um, you notice there is another person in the room sat in a one of the chairs at the side of the room. Uh, there is another drow. Um, James, would you tell us who is sat in the room as well? I will. Uh, sat in that chair is uh, a sort of tall, rather thin, but but strong looking drow. Um, he looks like a hunter. Uh, he's wearing sort of a fairly plain leather armor, sort of dark leather armor, and his white hair swept back into a, a ponytail. And uh, he's wearing a sort of a cloak, which is quite heavily lined with fur. And that is Nalas, who is Shania's older stepbrother. Mm. He looks rather disdainfully at the party's enter. Oh, look, it's fat little Shani. She uh, is hello? with child. It is a beautiful time in a young lady's life. So you say. Uh, Mater, Peter, but, um, why have you called me here? Your stepmother um, regards you with some interest and then beckons you forward um, towards her. Um, do you approach? Yes. It's a trap, Russ Gollum. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, uh, mm. So you approach, uh, you approach her, and as you get close, she reaches out, um, she reaches out one hand uh, as if to brush your cheek, and says, "My daughter." Uh, and as she gets to your cheek, she lowers her hand down and just places the hand on your belly instead. Um, says. This is a great honor that you carry, Shania. You are carrying the future head of House Azrain. When that girl is born, she will one day succeed me and my other disappointing children as the head of this great household and to turn us to glory. I hope you understand the privilege that you have been given by being allowed to carry this. Uh, of course, of course I do, uh, Meta, of course. She bows her head, she's shaking, she's clearly fearful. But the time uh, has come to uh, attend to matters spiritual regarding the child. There are things that must be carried out when there is the birth of a, a noble daughter. There is uh, an item that must be retrieved. Do you know of the Uh, vaults of Orv? I I have heard tell of them, but they are dangerous, no? (laughs) Of course you do not know so much, uh, Janaya. You are here for uh, what you can carry for us, not for your brains. The vaults of Orv lie deep below the Darklands, in the very heart of the Earth. They are built by aeons ago, by creatures not understandable to those who live above. And there are strange things below there. Deep below Amberweb, 
in the very heart of the vaults, there is the sightless sea. It is a great ocean beneath the earth. And there, there are islands where crafters make uh, uh, trinkets, items of ritualistic significance. There is one that I would have retrieved for my new daughter. Uh, it is a talisman, a powerful symbol uh, that will protect the child in its young life. It is tradition that expected mothers for go to the place, this place and retrieve these uh, items. Normally they do not go as deep as the vaults themselves, but uh, the last group that I sent to retrieve it, to bring it part of the way for you to meet them, disappointed me. And so now we are forced with the time that is, pre uh, is presented to us to send you yourself. It is imperative you retrieve this before the child is born, if it is to grow to the powers that I require it. Mate, you, you wish for me me to go, but but what of the child? The child uh, could could be harmed. No, this this is dangerous. I trust that you would not allow that to happen. But to be sure, I am not sending you alone. Karen will travel with you, obviously, because frankly, I don't want her in the house anymore. I trip over her yoga mat all the time. It's a nightmare. <laughs> There's incense everywhere, it's, it's dreadful. Imrath will protect you as well. And Nalas, you will go with Shania as well. Russ? No, Mother, I do not want to go. I don't care what you want to do. You are a male child of House Azrain. You do what you are told to do. You have lain about this house for long enough. But you said I could go and see Vash. Vash proved himself. He is a great warrior. That is why we sent him away to serve as the Grand Council. You serve us well on this. Perhaps you will end up the same as Vash. Huh? Fine. Very good. You will need guides as well. Our people do not travel below this level very often. And so I have arranged for some locals from the area who know the way to the, uh, the passage down to the vaults. Mm. Imras, open the door for me, will you? Uh, yes, yes, your majesty. Your, your, your highness, uh, <laughs> the lady of the house. Uh, he goes over to the, uh, the door, unlocks it opens it, bows his head. Uh, and flanked by a couple of drow guards, um, keep an eye, two figures enter. Um, first of all, Scott, who is one of the figures that enters the room? Uh, this figure is a small figure, a figure who is overwhelmed at being in the room that they are in. He's a small male gnome uh, with ashen skin, toes poking through his boots, a variety of accoutrement around his small diminutive body, including very large centipedes that look like they could be used for tools, um, and a fishing rod across his back. Uh, he wears a, a large mushroom cap as a hat, underneath which he is blushing profusely. Very nice. And Colin, who walks in beside him? So <clears throat> coming in beside him is a, uh, uh, a goblin uh, with sort of blue, greeny skin, dressed in a gray sort of leathery jacket with tassels hanging from his arms, studded armor underneath, really shiny teeth, like the cleanest teeth. He is so clean, it's unbelievable. They almost shine in the dark. Um, he has a tuft of sort of bright green, hair spiky on his head. He has a neckerchief, like a red neckerchief. Um, and he's got a, like a three quarter length blue trousers and what used to be cream colored boots, but they are definitely not cream anymore. He walks with like a short uh, staff 
and uh, yeah, that's what he looks like. <laughs> and his name is Fly Yai Flickerlow. Let me say that again. Fly Yai Flickerlow. <laughs> the uh, stepmother says, step forwards, the two of you. This uh, goblin and this... Uh, Wait, I am not a goblin. Everyone just stops and looks at you. <laughs> I am a drow, and I will not hear anything else. Why does everybody say this? Fuck! <laughs> mother, mother, please, you cannot be intending to send us with these things. What is this? Is this a joke? It is not a joke. We do not know the outsides of the city. These two do. They can help guide you. And what of you? Uh, are you a drow as well? I suppose, other creature? Uh, the gnome uh, goes wide-eyed at being addressed, looks around the throne room, uh, puts his head down so you see the bright spots on the mushroom cap and puts it back up again. Ah! Uh, no, uh, yeah, yes. Oh, no, I'm, no, I'm not a drow. You, you lot are drow. Mm, your ladyships and your, and then realizes that the males in the room. Your lordyships. Um, no, no, just a guide. Nebastian, the ladies, lordies, lordly ladyships. Mm. I like them. Mm. Well, at least this one knows his place. Mm. That's is right for us, Neef Leblin. That. Did not want to have to be the first one on the episode to have to say that, but somebody <laughs> was going to. Somebody was going to have to. So. I was waiting for it. I was like, I can say no. They know what I mean. <laughs> Take a run at it. <laughs> it's fine. Weirdly, if you uh, if Collins then plays that backwards in the recording later on, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's not the head lyrics. So, um, you will all you will all go to the outskirts to this uh, passage, to the vaults. Retrieve this uh, amulet and uh, give it to the child or bring it back here if the child is not born yet. But either way, you must either way return to me with my daughter properly blessed. Do this and you will all get what you deserve. You I already feel hashtag blessed sister. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother, <laughs> Trianus, just kind of puts his head in his hands a little bit and just looks like he wants to be anywhere but here. <laughs> Has that effect on people, that's fair. <laughs> like, I feel like they have had this conversation a lot of times about how long you are staying for in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but she's my sister. Yes, but she's terrible. Yeah, well... <laughs> Good for the baby. <laughs> Um, with that, you are uh, with that you are dismissed from the household uh, and sent outside. You step out of the gates uh, into the streets of the city of Umberweb. Uh, Umberweb is a uh, made up of great these great mushrooms that grow up out of the ground, uh, and the houses are carved into them. But they are solid; they're like solid like stone. These mushrooms, um, oh. but like, like the ones in Subnautica that you think, oh, it's a mushroom. That's it, and you crash your ship into it and it explodes. And you're like, oh, thanks, mushroom. Niche <laughs> reference, I know, but that really bu- that really bugged me uh, when that happened. Uh, so you step down the steps into the uh, the streets uh, and there is a there's a bit of a mix out here on the streets you know, the, the drow nobles themselves they don't tend to leave their uh, their homes very often and if they do they have a large retinue whereas on the streets uh, there's a mix of sort of common drow like um, like imrath um, who are not noble and there's a mix of other people as well you see a few um uh, you know, you see a few deep dwarf Durga, sort of grey-skinned dwarves moving around, um, very different to the ones that you remember from the surface, um, and, uh, and a couple uh, occasional deep gnomes uh, moving about, going uh, about their business. So, um, so Nebastian uh, and Flea, is it Flea or Fly? Fly. Fly. Nebastian and Fly. Um, you have been called in because. As, uh, as folk who live sort of in or around the town and aren't in the uh, upper areas, you've, you've been around a bit. You know, um, you know a bit about the outskirts of the town and you know that there is 
uh, the two of you found a while ago. There was a, a sinkhole on the edge of town, which you know goes far deeper down into the earth uh, that not many of the drow houses know about. Uh, and that is why you were called upon um, to help guide everyone to there. But we'll pick up with you all in the street as you're kind of, because this is the first time you're all gathered together. Um, we'll, we'll jump in with you here and, and see how's everyone doing. Okay. Uh, for, 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 for what is happening here? I, I've, I've never left the household before. I, uh, do, do, do we not need provisions, Le- weapons, Le- something? Lady Shania, you stay close to me, okay? Don't, don't stray away from me. I will protect you. <laughs> you will protect her. You, Imras. Uh, oh, yes. shut up, Nihilus. You, you are useless. You, you cannot even catch a fly in between some, uh, your, your fingers. You are useless. useless. You call perhaps. me useless, little Shani. Well, perhaps uh, I have a bald spot here on my cloak. I should add, uh, where is that awful little badger of yours? Perhaps I will add it to my collection. Don't, don't you, you judge have Philip, need... you stay away from Philip. Yeah, that's Would you saw... stop the arguments? You don't need to worry. You're with me. I am a famous warrior. I will take down anything. But you must get the weapons. Yes, a weapon would be good, Miss Rain. Um, uh, Imrath uh, hands Shania a uh, dagger that he has um, and says, Here, for your protection. Oh, 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 thank you so much. Wait, wait, uh, hold on. I think I have um, here. Yes, yes. From when, uh, from when I was doing the harvest, this sickle I have. Yeah, okay. This is. But you're going to say from, from when you were washing the pots, you just got a sickle. <laughs> 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 it's good for well, scraping off the water. Great. <laughs> I just need this to wash the pots. They, they had some grilled, chiseled on cheese. This only gets off with the sickle, yeah. Gerard <laughs> <laughs> loved their grilled cheese. That's a famous. <laughs> Famous drow, like, yeah. Uh, I love a bit of Welsh rabbit. <laughs> That's all they eat. This is good, yeah. So now you have the weapons. We can go to the sinkholes. Wait, hold on. The sinkholes? Where, 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 where are they? Yes, yes. On the outskirts of town. It is over here. I've been here before. The ladyship, uh, the drow. Nebastian looks at Fly. Um is correct there is a big hole goes right down into the middle of the earths and i can smell it and things come out of there and sometimes i talk to them and don't worry it's all gonna be okay uh, uh, have you been down there yourself is yeah. you? no 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 but i've i've been around it and i fished in the air over the hole and i've, I've, I've got some grubs I and think I have seen it, you. I think I have seen you around the edge of oh, the hole. You would never see me. I'm sneaky when I want to be. I can just pretend to be a mushroom. Look, oh, he, stands very, he stands very still, pretends to be a mushroom. Yeah, you, yes, I see what you do. Is it, uh, is it really dangerous down there? Who knows? I have never been down there, but it is exciting, no? <laughs> so both of you, you, are just, you are just hole edge hangers. This is what we've got. Just you hang on the edge of holes. And this is our party? Or? My, my, my ladyship. Oh, go on. My ladyship, if it was dangerous, it surely would prove no danger to drow as powerful and as mighty as yourselves and the sirs here. Why? Surely nothing in all the Darklands can be, per- can be dangerous to people such as yourselves. And he does a little bow. <laughs> I am a scullery maid, you fool. Oh, God. I don't yeah. know what that is, but I'm sure it's majestic. Uh, do not worry about little fat Shani, but uh, here you have, you are correct, yeah? And Nalas uh, unstrings like a, a really, really beautiful composite longboat from his back. I will protect you. At least one of us has some breathing, hmm? Naomi, what does Karen think about this? I think Karen's kind of, uh, she's in the back and she's doing a little bit of like stretching and like a little bit of like downward dog kind of is happening. She, <laughs> like they're having this conversation about who will protect who and she does like a backwards walkover with her like bendy fucking body. <laughs> 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 and she's like, what's, what's important here? It's not to stress. Stress leads to putting all of that bad vibes into the body and then you're sending those bad vibes into the baby. And as we know, babies only like good vibes. Good vibes only for babies. And uh, <laughs> and she, you know what, Car- Karen, you, you are absolutely right. For the good of the baby, we must all be calm. We must 
undertake uh, this challenge and uh, we must do it well. Come. Forward. I mean, I've had um, about, oh, geez. I've had 14 children and I've had to do this for all of them. It's really not a big deal. You know, it's just about stretching um, and taking our time. And, you know, it's all completely natural and natural is good. So we're, we're ready to go. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but yeah, you should, I, you should stay calm, yeah? And uh, perhaps if we are lucky down that big hole, we'll find some dwarves, yeah? <laughs> that would be good. Wouldn't you like to find some dwarves? You shut up, Nalas. You shut mm. up about dwarves, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can uh, Nabas... Nalas? Sorry, go. Yeah. Nabas is just looking at uh, Karen doing uh, the stretching and takes anything that the drow do as amazing and majestic and would try and like to very shyly emulate what she's doing in the in the street to see if I can. Can I like, was that a yeah, performance yeah. check or Go something? ahead, give us a performance check to see if you <clears throat> can match. No, stress. <clears throat> That's a natural one, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you both tie yourself in a knot and become stressed. <laughs> oh, oh. I don't know. This looks stressful to me. I don't think you look very relaxed there, sort of mushroom. You have uh, to work through it. It's a process. And Nalas, mm -hmm. you understand that I'm a generation above you and a woman. Yes, of course. I then apologize. Maybe you should stop stressing out on you, mother, and cut the bullshit. <laughs> now that looks cross, but he says, Yeah, of course, I will do this. Uh, my apologies, sister. Otherwise, you know, I'll Rain, push you in uh, that fucking hole myself. <laughs> Shinai you know, allows herself a little <laughs> smile at this. That was nice. Nalas does a curt little nod and just turns on his heel and starts stalking off down the street. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, you do not know where you are going. <laughs> what are you doing? It is the other way, Nalas. <laughs> he you stops down an times. alleyway. And uh, Ross Gollum. No. <laughs> Must <laughs> I, keep, I keep thinking you're saying Ross Gollum. Like, that would be scarier <laughs> if we just had, like, Aww. multiple mass Rosses, like, just appearing. <laughs> just uh, different, like, images of Ross from, you know, <laughs> kind of like handlebar moustache, Ross, goatee Ross. They're all just different, <laughs> but it's got to be uh, really. Yeah. Imrath quickly just turns, as we walk off, uh, just turns to Shania and just says, don't listen to him. I uh, I think you're pretty cool. <laughs> oh, thank you, Imrath. Um, <clears throat> your ladyship. <clears throat> Good. God, Caragor so, would have hated this guy. Caragor would have hated this guy yeah. so much. Like, <laughs> the differences between Caragor and Imrath is like Spike and Riley to Buffy. Like, I can't, the, the levels of like prehistoric I see you are off the charts. Good <laughs> reference. <laughs> oh, oh boy. This is like, this is, I did, there's, there's sort of a huge amount, I feel, of Caragor's existential crises are to do with the fact that this is happening about 200 years before he was born. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've acknowledged that. Can't even compete. Yeah. So, uh, you, what do you want to do? Do you want to, do you want to guide yourself out of town? Do you want to do any prep or anything? I Does mean, anyone think... need to get anything from the shops before we go? I am always ready. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm presuming, like, you know, like we, we, we gather up some provisions, yeah. whatever That's weapons right. we need, and then we get on our way, right? Let's, yeah, uh, all right. Let's do it. So you make your way out uh, of the town. As you walk along the streets, um, as you walk along the streets, you see a lot of the locals, um, particularly non-drow, um, they get out of your way. And specifically, they get out of Karen's way. Um, she is the one that is kind of parting the tide of people as you walk through. Um, it, it is known who the uh, members of noble houses are. And even as... Um, even as a sort of a, a lower member of, of a noble house, um, Karen, you still outrank everyone that you would meet on the streets uh, out here. The, the divide between um, noble and non-noble down it's here. It's because I'm spiritually awakened and all these bitches aren't. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Are you still yoga on your back down the street? <laughs> yeah, I think, I'm, I think I'm like warrior posing and doing like my deep breathing. And I think, nice. I'm, I think I'm occasionally like addressing people in the street but like in a really weird uncomfortable way you know those 
when you meet someone in the supermarket and they're like, oh my God, I just love your energy. Like that kind of thing. Oh you're my like, God. I just ah. want to please leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, uh, like that vibe. Worst. Um. <laughs> <laughs> She's the worst. Yeah. That's the worst. So as you make your way uh, along, the, you hear sort of <laughs> further back, you hear some people talk, you see somebody just go, maybe I should try yoga. <laughs> <laughs> These people yeah. kind of try to gauge what the new thing is for, uh, for the nobility. So you make your way through the streets of Umbleweb um, and out the city walls, uh, out into the main cavern itself, beyond the sort of the limits of the city, which is effectively out of the mushroom forest. That sounds made more of a Mario kind of thing, <laughs> uh, way of explaining it. Uh, but it's it's more sinister than that. But as you come sort of out of the, uh, the the great stalks of the mushrooms, which make the buildings of it, you come out into a vast empty cavern. There are occasionally little sort of rivers running across it, but there's not a whole lot out here. Um, there are small sort of there are some small shacks and things made out of um, sort of off cuts and fallen mushrooms. This is where the sort of shanty towns are, where the poorer live, where uh, any of the, uh, it's where um, all the uh, the deep gnomes live out here. Um, they don't live in the main city. And so as you make your way through it, the level of the poverty level drops. Um, or increases rather as you as you get through here. Um, there's not a lot of building materials down in the dark lands. You know, there's no there's no wood in the dark lands. It all has to be made out of these great mushrooms and sort of carved off it. So it's not like if you're poor, you can just go and knock down a tree uh, and use it. You have to really because these mushrooms are huge. You have to wait until you have to salvage stuff. So it's more like it's more like a favela than anything else. You know, it's more like the houses are made of like salvaged bits of metal and things like that. It's that kind of vibe. These, uh, um, so you make your way through this, um, looking at the creatures who kind of peer out at you. Um, and um, uh, finally, you get to the very edge um, of the cavern. Um, Fly and Nebastian um, and lead you through this, uh, around behind a sort of a heavy rock fall. Uh, and there before you, looking down, you can see a great sinkhole. You can see a pit that just drops away it's just a sheer edge and then it just drops down into the darkness uh, and you can see a slight shimmer of water uh, at the bottom and um, very far down near the water you can see that there is a crack in the rock um, that seems to have some carvings around it which appears to uh, be a way down way, a way on however there is no obvious way down um, other than climbing down the uh, the sheer rock face itself to try and get there with a heavily pregnant Shania. So I hope you have all stretched because that's Hi where we're going to leave it for tonight. Oh! <laughs> right. Well, well, well. Party. Well, well, Good party, well. everyone. Let's see how yeah. we go. We'll see you next week.